Hello, I'm going to talk about Sanskrit and Vedic words ending in as or ah. And even if you're a student only of Pali rather than Sanskrit, it's useful to know what happens in Sanskrit uh, because it will help you to understand a number of things that might otherwise seem anomalous in Pali. Like so much else, what might seem odd or anomalous in Pali is easily understood when you know what it is in Sanskrit. Now, in Sanskrit, um, but when I say Sanskrit, I include Vedic, of course, maybe I should be saying Vedic, but um, there, there it is, force of habit. We have a lot of words ending in what was primitively, even in pre-Vedic times, in as. The most common uh, form, or the, the most common meaning of the ending as, was the masculine nominative singular, which is cognate you know, with um, the, the Latin ending in us and the um, Greek ending in os. Now, as time went on, and already by the earliest Vedic times, a word could not, standing on its own, or at the end of a sentence, or in certain other, um, in certain other situations, end in an as. That as changed to ah, which in transliteration we write as a subdotted h. In the Devanagari script, it's written as something like a colon. For example, it write a single, this is the letter ka, and the ka, which we'd write in transliteration as a ka with a subdotted h, is written like that. So those two dots following it represent the ah sound. As to how it was pronounced, um, the better view, what I believe to be the better view, it's like a throaty ah sound. In modern India, among the Hindi speakers especially, you'll hear it pronounced as a soft H, ah, and sometimes with a soft A, ah, ah, with a shadow of the vowel appearing after it. So if they were saying what we'd write as ka, they would pronounce it either as ka or ka almost as if there's a tiny little ah appearing after it, but in fact treated as one syllable. Now, this ah ending behaves in different ways depending on what follows. As I've said, if the word is standing in isolation at the end of a sentence or just been quoted on its own, it will end in ah. So if you just, um, who's there? Hmm? The Buddha, you say Buddha in Sanskrit. Now, sorry, missed out the H there, Buddha. When it's followed, when any word ending in an ah is followed by another word beginning with a k or a k, or p, or p, it remains like that. Equally for sh, sh, and s, there can also be assimilated there. That's a, a sub rule we won't bother with here. So in all of these circumstances here, it will remain the ah. Where the following word begins with a vowel, any other vowel apart from a short a, uh, the, the subdotted h will simply drop. So if you want to say Buddha, Eva, that ha uh, will drop. So Buddha Eva. And as if a Buddha. B 
beginning with an, uh, the letter E here. Again, that will drop Buddha Iva. And that is the same for all vowel, all following vowels, except a short A. Uh. If the if the a uh comes immediately before a word beginning with a short a, uh, then what happens, say the, the man goes hence, so nara ita from here, gachati. So nara, the man on its own would be nara, hence from here, ita. Gachati goes. The man goes hence. Nara. Now, sorry, that was meant to be an atta. What happens here when the a ah is followed by another word beginning with an, a short a? Ah, is that it changes naro the ah becomes an o and the first ah just drops out and is often represented in transliteration by an apostrophe so naro ta the man hence so nara ata becomes naro ta The final ah uh, also becomes an o oh if it's followed by a voiced consonant, like a, a g. So in running speech, that atahagachati would become ato gachati. So you have narah. Atah gachati, you wouldn't say that, would be naroto gachati. So that ah changing to an o, that's before any voiced consonant and before a word uh, beginning with a short ah. A final ah will revert to its original form of us before a word beginning with a ta or a ta. So, for example, uh, the man crosses over. We would have nara on its own would be nara and crosses, as in crosses a river, tarati. Now, before ta, that a ah changes back to its primitive s, so naras tarati. And I'll give you a couple more examples. From the root num, we have the word namas. By the way, this as ending here isn't the masculine, uh, nominative masculine singular ending. This is a stem ending. The, the stem form of the word ends in an as, so namas. Supposing in Sanskrit you want, it means homage. If you want to say homage to the Buddha, the namas on its own then becomes namah in pause before a voiced consonant as say Buddha, homage to the Buddha in Sanskrit becomes namo buddhaya. Now, as I said on the previous page, before a following T, it remains in its primitive form of us. 
by primitive, I mean pre-Vedic, the, the, the very oldest form of the, of the language. So homage to thee becomes, it would be namah te to thee, but that, oops, that, sorry. So I'm getting, something's gone wrong here with my iPad or with my attempt to use the iPad. So it, that becomes, back to where we were, namas te, our familiar Hindu greeting. This is a pure Sanskrit, namaste, homage to thee. So the namah on its own, can become namo before a voice consonant, namo buddhaya, before a T, namas, namaste. Now, the various things that can happen to this final as, can stay as it is, as, or ah, or o, these various things that can happen to it in Vedic and Sanskrit, depending on what's following, have become generalized in Pali to the ending O. So Pali doesn't have this complexity as it ends in ah, as, or O. In Pali, it tends to always just to be O. So for example, um, in Sanskrit, homage to that, homage to the blessed one, where in Pali we're used to chanting Namo Tassa, Bhagavato, and so on. In Sanskrit, it would be Namas Tasmai Bhagavate, dative. Namas Tasmai Bhagavate. In Pali, with this Sanskrit as, ah, o, all becoming o, it's why we chant. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Bhagavato Now this rule will explain a number of other things as well. From the root man basically meaning to, to think. It's the same root as our word mind. And it's no coincidence, by the way, that man and man, English man, uh, are the same because the human being has the unique quality of, or we assume to be the unique quality of being able to think. So man means the thinker. So man, and we have the word manas, meaning mind, which then following the usual rules written on its own in Sanskrit would be manah. This, by the way, is a neuter and the manas is the stem form of it. So for example, in the mind would be manas, manasi. So followed by the locative, the, the locative of the consonantal stem is an E, not an A. Manasi. As for example, in the, the word attention. This is now in Pali. Manasi kara. Literally, making in the mind. Kara sometimes is putting. So manasi kara, the kara putting. Manasi in the mind. So manasikara means attention, as in pay, paying attention. The opening words of the Dhammapada, Mano Pubangama Dhamma, Mano Pubangama, mind foregone, Pubangama, pre gone. So 
preceded by. In Sanskrit, that would be manah purvangama. Following the rule that an, an ah remains as an ah before a k, k, p, m, p. That's why it's manah purvangama. But by the same rule that I just described, whereby the a word that ends in ah or as in Vedic and Sanskrit becomes an o in Pali, whatever follows. That is why we have the opening words in the Dhammapada of Mano Pubangama. Now the last word in the first line of the Dhammapada, chapter one, verse one, is manomaya, the suffix maya, not to be confused with maya illusions, it's maya simply means made of, composed of. It's manomaya, so manomaya dhamma, so dhamma's men mental phenomena, mental natures are made of mind. In Sanskrit, equally, it wouldn't be the mana maya, because it's followed by a voiced consonant, it becomes manomaya, the same as Pali. But the difference is in Pali, it always becomes an O, whereas in Sanskrit, it becomes an O because it's followed by a voiced consonant. Um. So I hope that this has explained to you what happens to the various things, um, the various forms that a Vedic or Sanskrit word ending in as can take. And it should also explain um, why so many of these of the words in Pali end in an O. Right, that's it on this presentation.